Well, it was literally only just a few days ago, literally, where Liz Trust was celebrating on Twitter that wine drinkers here in the UK would be celebrating as they can finally, finally be able to essentially save 20 pence on what is dubbed New World Wines. And where do these new wines come new world wines come from? Well, they predominantly come from New Zealand or Australia. And in the UK, we only drink about 10% of new world wines. Where's our biggest number of, of, of wines where we drink? Well, you won't be surprised to hear that it's France, Spain, and Italy. And what do all those three countries have in common? Why, yes. Yes, indeed. They are all in the EU. Now, this will be no surprise to people who have uh, been following along Brexit on my channel. You know about these problems that wine merchants have been having for a while with their new uh, CTF1 forms of trying to uh, not only import wine from the Europe into the UK, but also vice versa of UK wines into the EU, this is going to cause a massive problem for the wine industry in the UK, especially for the vast majority of people who, should we say, drink and enjoy wine from, uh, again, the most predominant EU countries who are literally on our doorstep. And as was even said back then, these forms and a lot of these problems and teething problems, as they have been called by people like Michael Gove and Boris Johnson, they are not teething problems. They are here to stay. They are not going anywhere anytime soon, unless we actually, again, rejoin the customs union or single market. Unless we achieve one of those two things, um, or even both, um, they ain't going anywhere anytime soon. But before we do jump into uh, this article, uh, please do head down below to check out my Patreon page and, of course, my uh, one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And thank you very much to all those people who do support the channel that way. And, of course, you can also support, this, uh, you can also support the channel by hitting the like, share, and subscribe button as well. So, on with the article. Like I say, today you can see the today's article comes from the London Economic. The uh, title is wine merchant speaks out about brexit saying teething problems have become permanent fixtures which is exactly what was always going to happen so wine merchant in brigand wales says his company faces the biggest threat to its future since it began in 1992 owing to issues caused by brexit Daniel Lelmont took to Twitter to bemoan the problems caused by Britain's split with the European Union, saying that teething problems have become permanent fixtures for his business. Exactly what we've been saying all along. So the award-winning retailer, which specialises in very niche wine imports, stocks a vast array of wines from 10 different wine-producing nations and sources all products directly from the producer. But recently, it has become a real challenge, and with worse yet to come, according to Lambert. In a Twitter thread, he wrote this. Over the past 15 days, I have not only been running my company as normal, but I have been faced with the largest threat to its future since it began in 1992. This is Brexit. The teething problems the government has talked about back in January have become permanent fixtures and costs continue to increase. And still, the Brexit deniers want to pretend that this is what we voted for. Just imagine what happens when HMRC starts checking goods coming in from the UK, from the EU. And again, that is still the biggest threat when this starts to happen. This is going to be an absolute omni-shambles from every single direction, because at the moment, no checks have started happening. October is when they will start happening. So it's from October is the first lot come in. 
then March of next year, right through um, till I think it's January of 2023. And that is when we are going to start to see huge, huge problems. Oh, anyway, he continues. Lambert says that things are so bad, he is even considering leaving the country, telling the BBC the system is just not working. So we can find the interview and, of course, the full thread down here. So let's go into his full, let's see if we can get the full thread here. So excellent, excellent, excellent. Uh, hold on. Let me stop and we'll share the screen because this is fantastic when he, when he goes on about this. Here we are. So this is his full Twitter thread. So, uh, over the past 15 days, I have not uh, I have uh, not only been running my uh, company as normal, but I have also been faced with the largest threat to the future since it began in 1992. This is Brexit, and here's my thread on just how bad things are getting. Six months ago, my business started to prepare for Brexit. We obtained the following licenses and accreditations, just to maintain the status quo. The EROI, or the number of ROC badges for the chiefs of the GMCRB number, the GWB number, we were already had the ARWS and the DNN accounts. So all that, that's just paperwork. And those are just acronyms for paperwork. And I've said before, uh, a long time ago now, we have to prepare for what these new acronyms are going to be. But I all, always guarantee you, these are going to be, um, you know, you know, short shorthands for um paperwork but this is this is what we've got so this all took nearly five months from a long a lot of form filling and on the 9th of december this was all in place so i so while i would say whilst we knew brexit would be a car crash we did not know it was going to be a multiple pile car up it with <laughs> in the fog with uh <laughs> with the facilities that was good on the 4th of January, I returned to work, being wise enough to have stockpiled just enough so that we could have a bumpy ride in January, which would have seen us through to last until at least February. Um, I also, is that, yeah, I, I should also, uh, yes, I should also add, this took very considerable amount of cash flow and management to do during a lockdown slash pandemic combined with Xmas sales, but we managed. Um, here we are. So on my return in January, I started to use Chief, which is the uh, UK custom system, for the very first time. It was not possible to use um, possible to use this system prior to Brexit, or even necessary as it was uh, very simple to move stock from the EU with minimal fuss and very delay to the EMCS system. Uh, it's fair to say that it worked like clockwork. After 40 years of tweaks to get the system just right, but in Brexit Britain, we are very much on our own. And so this British system, Chief, has now got every every product in the UK consumes uh, in its grasp. However, the problem with the Chief system is that it was built decades ago and was never designed to handle EU imports too. Why would a system like that not work but what, what, what one does? The Chief Declaration, or the C88, has up to 65 boxes to complete. Some of these are very simple exercises, excise numbers and parties involved on the import. So basic stuff. Others, however, are very vague codes. Chief is there for the government to collect tax. That is its primary purpose. It is not there to aid businesses. It definitely hinders businesses. On this point, no debate is required. Most of the other boxes are codes that have zero meaning. Now, unbeknown to me, until January, all hauliers have used secondary softwares to write into Chief because it is so hard to use. There is currently a four-month waiting list for new installations of the software, which costs over 2K in all. I've been in, I have been inputting directly into Chief 
which I should say adds over 150, 100, 157 pounds per month to be able to access. Yes, that's right, folks. You have to pay to tell the government how much you are going to pay them the first Brexit dividend. Now, just after 14 days, I finally complete my first C88 declaration. But I noticed I was paying the third country's tariff. Odd, I thought to myself. I'm sure I just three weeks ago said the UK signed an FDA with the EU to make sure all goods tariffs were free. So I had to use my contacts to find out more. Now, you would think the government would want to make use of using Chief as easy as possible, as there are now millions of businesses having to use it. Or so you would think. That call to the call centre would be a good idea, right? No, wrong. This is the only HMRC system where there is no number to call, just an email with a five-day turnaround. Remember that when the government say they are going to do all the help they can try and get again, this is an absolute disaster for a business to do. end up doing this. So with the knowledge that the government are basically not interested in making Brexit easier for businesses, it may, in many cases, and many businesses are just trying to survive. We have plowed on regardless. Again, if you would think that if there was a free trade agreement, Chief would apply it to all imports from your area country right. Wrong. You have to claim it. It's unbelievable. Claiming a tariff-free status was yesterday's game with Chief. To be fair, deep in Chief files, I found the notes to apply all the codes to the system required for the U U one eleven U one ten and followed by the AP, for example. But the problem is after triple checking, Chief has not been properly updated. So once again, I can't import my wine with my own means until I wait for Chief staff normally up to five working days, for them to advise how to correct the problem and complete the declaration correct, correctly tariff-free. So what does this mean for the consumers? Well, to supply the UK exporter, we need to get a REX document to provide the proof of origin to stock the UK government. Again, unbelievable. Then, with all the additional costs in paperwork, time wasted, government fees to tell the government how much we're going to pay them, and delays in supply chains, it's obvious the price are upward bound. So this is why I've been saying per wine per bottle on retail will increase by at least one pound per bottle for mass market products. For niche to small branch wines, you're looking at least one pound fifty or even two pounds on the bottle price. There's all those Brexit dividends. This government have well and truly cocked up Brexit from day one. Now I am 100% sure that the choice to reduce uh, will reduce dramatically, uh, the price will increase dramatically, and days, in, days with increase dramatically with the UK's wide depression is inevitable, but this, covered, this government still couldn't give a toss. This is why I will leave the country next year once my kids have finished education. I'm lucky to have a second nationality within the EU, thanks to my father. But for all those who can't leave, I understand why you are angry with what uh, uh, with what I can see uh, are about your <laughs> about you lot have more than taken away, uh, and just the freedom uh, of movement. The Tory Party is no longer the Tory Party; it's UKIP that has assumed control of the Tory Party. Their goal is clear, to commit economic vandalism and social vandalism on the UK while ensuring that they get considerably wealthier. This is just very sad for what was a great country. And um, yeah, it does, doesn't surprise me at all. Um, I highly suspect we might see more stuff like this in the future. And like I say, Brexit is going to, Brexit is nowhere near finished. Uh, I've said this, I don't know how many times, it will go on and on and on. And once businesses start to cry about this, and they will, and they will, that is when it will come back to the centre for of the issue again. It won't just be Northern Ireland this time, it will be the whole of the UK experiencing these problems. And this is where it will start to bite. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out. And of course, down below, below there's a link to my Patreon page, as well as one of donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can well buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you all next time.